Hello again. Thank you very much for joining me here on Movie Ninja. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about the 2020 drama film, The Waterman. Now, The Waterman focuses on the Boone family, particularly its youngest member, Gunnar Boone, who is struggling to come to terms with his mother's cancer diagnosis and treatment. After they move to a new town, Gunnar looks into conventional means of possibly up, upping the ante for her treatment and maybe guiding uh, medical professionals in different directions that may help his mother, but unfortunately he's ignored. And so when the conventional route doesn't really bear fruit for him, he looks for the unconventional. He looks for possible alternative medicine or even miracle cures. And in his research, he comes across a legend for a local, hmm, monster hobo shaman. I'm not trying to make fun of the, the, the eponymous Waterman, but local legend. The local legend of the Waterman is from a man who survived uh, about a century or two, almost 200 years prior, uh, survived a mine collapse because uh, he found a mysterious magical uh, rock that gave him immortality and it is believed by the locals that he still lives in the woods uh, and so uh, Gunner and his uh, newly acquainted friend uh, Joe a uh, young lady who claims to know the ins and outs of, of the forest and where it can be found they go on their own little personal mission to find the Waterman and possibly, you know, help his mother survive her, her cancer. Now, as I talk further about this film, there are going to be some spoilers. So just be warned. We might get into some territory where I have to, you know, reveal certain aspects of the story. Now, okay. I, an important side uh, side note about all of this is that Gunner and his father, a Navy serviceman, uh, they have a very difficult relationship. Both of them are struggling with the possible loss of mother and wife, and neither of them really combine very well in this crisis, and so they chafe against each other on several occasions. So a big part of this is for Gunner's father has to be where can I be for my son? Like what is the best possible way that I could join efforts with my son if only to bring comfort to my wife? And he uses the initiative of finding and rescuing a son who's gone on this uh, fantastical uh, adventure in the local woods as a way to sort of uh, you know bridge the gap between them and maybe even heal some uh, heal some wounds between them and that is definitely very commendable now the film it sets up its premise fairly well the characters are well established uh, and yet at the end at the 11th hour everything feels rushed the film asks the audience a question, like, how much do you give in to... Does Gunner... How much does Gunner, how much should he give in to the fantastical prospect of a miracle cure rather than dealing with the harsh, grim reality of his situation? Uh, what is he willing to sacrifice for this uh, impossible miracle cure? And in a way, it develops its themes fairly well, uh, soberly. Uh, it doesn't go over the top making certain uh, fantastical promises. And yet, right at the end of everything, it felt like the film could have wrapped up better. When you get to the very end of the film and the credits come up, uh, for myself, I was saying, uh, is that it? It felt like the film could have been at least 10 to 15 minutes longer, at least, you know, the father and the son 
they come to terms with each other. The family comes to terms with how Gunner's mother is probably not going to get better. But it felt like they needed one more conversation. Okay, this is what we're going to do for the duration of your mother's health care. Maybe talk about hospice care. Maybe talk about, okay, there's something. Uh, that, you know, like, son, I feel like we need to have a conversation about the near future when it might just be the two of us. The film approaches its heavy subject matter in a very responsible and mature way for the most part but it just neglects to wrap up everything at the very end and I don't understand why so overall I would say that this is still a good film it's still a good family film uh, some of the prospects of fantasy are abandoned like, like very uh, very bluntly and, well, as I mentioned, the end overall is kind of a, kind of unsatisfying. So overall, I would give The Waterman a solid, respectable 6 out of 10. I think most people who see the film will appreciate it. They'll appreciate the tone, the subject matter, performances. They're all really good, except when you get to the very, very end of things, it felt like there could have been, should have been more to, to it overall. Um, this film, both in terms of its uh, its themes and overall with regards to how everything works out at the very end, it reminds me, and remember the spoilers, it reminds me a lot of Bridge of Terabithia, which is, I think, a good companion piece for this if you were in line for similar, similar entertainment. So, But The Waterman... Solid 6 out of 10. And yeah, that's my review for The Waterman. Did you guys see it? If you did, what did you think? Did you think that it could have been improved a little bit more? Do you think I'm being a bit too harsh? Uh, let me know in the comments section, please. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.